Mmm, Carl, you're gonna love this new mm. recipe I'm trying. It smells really good, and pasta, one of my favorite indulgences. Yes, I know, and I've also put a secret ingredient into the sauce. Another one of your favorite indulgences. One of mine? Exactly. May I? Absolutely. Ah, yes, wine. But Steve, a Pinot Noir from the Napa Valley in California. You should have gone with a Sangiovese for this quintessential Italian dish. Carl, you drive me. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of One Chef, One Critic. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Steve, there's an old line that goes, I love cooking with wine, and sometimes I even put it in the food. <laughs> but putting wine in food is actually quite a good idea, isn't it? It enhances the flavor of a dish. Indeed it does, Carl. It does enhance that flavor. And I wouldn't go with a cheap wine or leftover wine for cooking either. I'd use maybe a nice Chardonnay to cook with my fish, a nice Pinot Noir if I'm going to be making a nice Cocovan or something like that. And I'd also marinade some of my meats as well overnight with the wines as well because that really tenderizes the meat. Yes it does, it's yeah. very effective that way and yeah. it's also good in, in stews, braises, mm -hmm. things that are cooked over, with a low heat for a long time. Extended periods uh, of time. Gi yes. It gives the, gives the wine a, a time to work on Absolutely. the dish and yeah. um, really you know build the flavors. Um, what about cooking wine from the supermarket? Good point, Carl. I never use it myself because it's got a lot of salt content in there and I can't judge it with the recipe. Or, or if you're going to use it with the recipe, you've really got to reduce your salt content in there. Yes, okay. Yeah. Well, that's something to bear in mind. Best to get uh, the real thing, folks. Coming up to the program today, we have as our special guest, Jeff Adams. Jeff is with the New Curtain Theatre Company in Clarenville. And what are we going to be cooking with Jeff? We're going to be making stuffed peppers with a beautiful tomato sauce. Ah, a bit of a retro dish it's there indeed, today. Indeed, yeah. And Chef Bernie Ann Essical of Academy Canada's Culinary Programs with us. She's going to do a dessert for us with pumpkin. Stay tuned. For a complete listing of One Chef, One Critic recipes, wine lists, and more, check out our website. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600 or send us an email at onechef.onecritic at rci.rogers.com. And we're very happy to welcome Jeff Adams, the Artistic Managing Director of the New Curtain Theatre Company of Clarenville to One Chef, One Critic. Thank How you. Are you? I'm doing great. How about so, you? Good. Sounds yeah. like you're the uh, chief cook and bottle washer. <laughs> uh, yes, and uh, if anyone has ever watched Slings and Arrows, they'll see a lot more of what I do as well. Yes, that's yes. true. Yes, that's a fabulous, uh, fabulous series, by the way, yeah. for, for anybody out there who's interested in um, television. Uh, what are we going to be cooking today? Well, it's a bit Jeff, of a retro dish, isn't it? It is, actually, Carl. Yes. We're going to be making stuffed peppers, stuffed green peppers, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, I think we should get started. I've got a, a pan there nice and warm. We'll add a little bit of olive oil into there. And Carl, I'm going to get you to uh, make a broccoli slaw. So we've got some shredded broccoli there. We're going to put some apples, some raisins, and some right. pecans in there. Okay, that and I've nice. got an English uh, salad cream dressing there for you as well. Okay. So, yeah. so I'll get you to start stirring this, Jeff. Okay. And I'll chop some onions up as well. So, Jeff, you're not inexperienced when it comes to cooking. You've uh, cooked semi-professionally or uh, yes yeah yeah I uh, I actually have been cooking since I was very young uh, mm -hmm. with uh, a mother who uh, went back to work when we were all in high school and of course we'd get home from work and uh, or get home from school and uh, I'd be starving and uh, mm -hmm. of course um, I couldn't wait till six o'clock when she got home so I'd start cooking myself but when I was in Vancouver I actually started doing some studying in uh, a French culinary school out there. Oh, really? Yes, at uh, the Pierre de Brule, which unfortunately doesn't exist anymore. But uh, I was doing a whole summer of part-time uh, studies out there. Since then, I've taken it and put it into the theater business as well. So. Okay, and, and how do you do that? Well, uh, a couple of years ago, when I was working out here with Rabbit Town Theater, we decided to theme some dinners. Ah, with some okay. of our shows, sure, and it yeah. all started with uh, with Aidan Flynn's show, uh, Penning the Carol. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what we would do is, uh, uh, I, I designed a, uh, a Victorian pub lunch 
And mm -hmm. so for an additional fee, uh, people got to uh, to eat a period uh, period meal. Oh, very good. From, from the Dickens era. I didn't, so. I didn't review, review you by any chance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> She's suddenly starting to get very nervous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay. And we did that for about three years running. Oh. And that started to go actually into to other shows as well. We, did, Myself and Aiden actually did a, uh, a show called The Monk. Mm -hmm. And it was a, uh, a Viking era uh, piece. And I designed a Norwegian meal to, oh, to no, go with no it. No wine in that one, I suppose. <laughs> no, lots of, uh, what's, what's the... Uh, the uh, mead. Uh, mead, oh. right, yes, yeah. So, uh, but we, we had uh, like a fish stew, and yeah. then as well, we uh, did um, Norwegian pancakes. Mm. I actually have a couple of cast iron, about 150 year old waffle uh, irons. Are they very thin, the pancakes? Very, very thin, thin, very thin. Very very like thin. Yes, bread, yeah. and we did a, uh, a partridge berry, or like the Norwegians call it, a lingonberry. Berries, yes, or, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, then a, a cream that went with it. So. We, we try and we did another one, um, we did the, the Fights, which was an Irish based mm -hmm. one, and we did a, an Irish stew with that with soda bread. Oh, very so, good. And we've been doing the same thing now out in, in Clarenville at, oh, uh, at the theatre out yeah. there. So it tends to draw people out, yeah. food does. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure <laughs> You so feed them or give them something to drink. Just to backtrack a bit, uh, how did you get bitten by the theatre bug? <sighs> It, when I was growing up in Clarenville I, in, and in Shoal Harbor in that area, I'm originally from Milton, and uh, there was always a couple of small groups out there, small theater companies and amateur, mm -hmm. and uh, I was always involved in mm -hmm. going up through high school. Yes. And then when I moved to Vancouver, I decided to take a more of a professional stab out mm -hmm. of it, and uh, that's what I ended up doing. And moved from my original career of architecture Mm -hmm. into the world of film, TV, and theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, spent 16 years out there and then moved back here and started up theater company here. So, uh, you, I mean, you're, you're a pretty uh, smart guy. I mean, you must have known that you were getting into an area oh, yeah. of work that is, <laughs> is no, notorious for not being a very good way to make a living. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so did you weigh up the pros and cons before you I, I weighed threw up, caution to the wind? I certainly did, and what I ended up doing is I I'm going to remove that from okay. the yeah. Okay. I ended up um, taking what I had learned previously and using it as my backup plan, okay. which uh, I, w I have advised many, many prospective actors to go and do. I, I always have something to feed you during the lean time mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, yeah. it, there's going to be a few of them. There's yeah. going to be a yeah. few of them, yeah. but in, in Vancouver, you can actually spread yourself around like I did background work and uh, and and then I'd have my paying gigs and then I'd also teach at the uh, the William B. Davis School for Actors where I got my training at out there. So, oh, so you did, did do pro professional Oh, training. yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, William B. Davis, actually, if anyone has watched The X-Files, he was the, uh, the cigarette man. That's yeah. right, yeah. And... Yep. Uh, Hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to be having him directing a show for us next year. Oh, that sounds exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to be doing Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Oh, yeah. and that's a challenging play for a couple of actors. It is a challenging yeah. play, and there's actually, it's a, an ensemble that I put together with Bill directing, mm -hmm. myself playing George, and another former student of the school, uh, Elizabeth uh, Perry, or Connors, she's sometimes known as, and she's from Australia. Mm. So she's actually the artistic director of our sister company in Australia. So we have we just started it up last year, wow. and so she's going to bring herself up here, and and we're going to do that show here next spring. Yeah. yeah. And, and so what 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 do you mean by sister company? What does that entail? What's well, uh, we just started it, so we're still trying to sort of work out you know the the, the rough spots and that, but. The plan is is that we're going to switch off doing shows between here and Australia. Oh, oh really? And, oh. Yeah, and uh, it's it's an exciting project. It's just in the in the planning stages now, but uh, first off, we're doing our show, and she's coming up here, and then we'll go down there, and we'll take a, a show of hers and do, and then probably bring it back up here. 
That's a sounds, deal. So, yeah, that sounds really, really, really exciting. Yeah. Okay, so, Jeff. What I did there, um, as you saw with the with the vegetables there, I reduced it with a little bit of yellow belly stout beer, mm. and then I added that to some cooked rice, some ground beef, and I'm now stuffing the peppers which I already seared Ooh. on the on the top of the stove there. And then we'll put some mm. uh, tomato tomato sauce over it, then bake it in the oven for about an hour. Mm. Perfect. So 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 getting involved in theatre was one thing, but you did that in Vancouver, which is you know a risk a risky enough proposition. <laughs> exactly. But then to decide, oh. I'm going to go back to Clarenville and open a theater company and make a living that way. How, how did that come about? That came about because in Vancouver, I was finding that you were working sporadically and you were at the whim of casting directors and, and, and the sort. And I said, I want to take more control of this. I really, if I'm going to do this for the rest of my days, I, I want to be the one in charge. And I said, what better way to do it than to come back here? And, and I had been back doing a festival in 2004 and, in Gross Morn. Mm -hmm. And noticed that there, Clarenville was growing, but it did not have an art segment. Mm -hmm. I said, well, this, and I spoke to, you know, some people in the town, the town manager. I said, what do you think? And they said, please, please come back. We need this element yeah. with a, a, a population that's growing. Yeah, perfect. You know, and so I just packed everything up. Sold everything Good off for you. and moved back. And uh, we'll, we'll pick up on that later on, but uh, right now I'm going to check out the wine cellar and see if we can get a bottle of wine for this. Ooh, Perfect. Okay. Sounds, oh, sounds good. <laughs> well, Jeff, through the magic of uh, TV, if you just want to stand to the side there, we do have three already prepared, which we'll be going Lovely. to eat in the dining room afterwards. And Lovely. Away we go. These do look pretty good there. And as you can okay. see there, they're well cooked. And I, and I put some cheddar cheese on the top there as well. So oh, we're uh, all ready to go there. And I mm -hmm. think served with the salad, we're away to the races. Hey, Tracy. Hey, Carl. Well, we have a retro dish today for sure. It's stuffed bell pepper, which wow. uh, I, I don't know how long it's been since I've had stuffed bell peppers. But anyway, it's a nice hefty dish, not too spicy, uh, meaty. I'm thinking red wine today. I agree, absolutely. So I have three choices for you. Okay. The first is the Erasmus Max Reserva Cabernet Savion Blanc, which is from Chile. This retails at the NLC for about $19.50. Gorgeous, hefty, full body red wine with lots of green pepper spice, dark fruit flavors. Beautiful, beautiful wine that would it be nice. It sounds like it would go really well yeah. with the red pepper or the bell pepper. And the next wine we have is the Copper Moon Shiraz, and this is from Niagara in Canada. And this retails for about $13. This Shiraz is actually a little bit lighter style than most Shiraz, the way that it's made. Mm -hmm. um, nice dark pepper uh, spice, mm -hmm. dark fruity flavors again. Be lovely with the green pepper uh, dish. The last wine we have is from McWigan. Uh, it's called the Black Label Cabernet Merlot, and this is from Australia, and it retails for about fifteen dollars and forty-nine cents. I've never heard of McWigan. It's a new winery, or new winery to get to the NLC. Absolutely, um, it's been here for a couple of months, and if you can see by these stickers up here, it has quite a few accolades. It's actually won Winemaker of the Year for a couple of years in a row now. The only winery in the world to win those accolades. Wow. Yeah. So. Very well, exciting. That is pretty uh, impressive, yeah. So, let me see here. Uh, I'm thinking because you said this Shiraz was a little bit on the lighter side. Yes. Uh, that it's probably not going to stand up quite as well with the uh, bell pepper. Um, this one intrigues me, but hey, uh, Chilean wine? I think it might be a great you choice. Can't, you can't beat it. I'm going to go with the uh, Max Reserva from Razuriz. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Enjoy. Now we'll just take our last pepper from our tomato sauce, pop it on the plate with our beautiful broccoli slaw, and we'll go and join Jeff and Carl at the table, see what they think. Well, this was an easy decision, red wine with this fairly uh, heady dish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks heady, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, well, I, it's been a long time since I've had a stuffed pepper. I, yeah. I must to say, uh, I'm anxious to see what this tastes like. Mm. Mm. Very good. That's really mm. good. <laughs> well, lovely. An excellent job. Why, well, thank you. On all our parts. It was a joint mm. effort. Yeah. It's like a play, you see. Everybody has to do their bit. It's an ensemble. <laughs> an ensemble. <laughs> uh, just getting back to talking about uh, plays and theater, 
what is what are your facilities like in Clarenville? Do you actually have a a theater there to work out of? We do actually. We were very lucky in that we actually acquired uh, one of the ski lodges at the base of the uh, the White Hill right. Ski Resort. Yeah. And we went in about five years ago, five six years ago, and renovated it to uh, give us a lovely 65, 75 seat theater up yeah. in the oh, lo which so is called is, the Loft Theater. This is yours permanently? Uh, well, it is right now, oh. but we may be moving actually coming oh, up uh, okay. closer into yeah. town. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Uh, so do you do any any touring at all? Uh, I know you were talking about the Australian project, but mm -hmm. I mean, would you would New, New Curtain, for example, go to Gander? I mean, there's arts and cultures right across the, the, uh, the province. Really. Yeah, we, 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 we do actually. Actually, and we have already toured in here to St. John's. We've brought a couple of our mm -hmm. shows. We've brought uh, David French's Soldier's Heart and uh, Stephen Masticott's uh, Mary's Wedding mm -hmm. in here. And we're looking at bringing some to Gander this fall as well. So oh, doing excellent. more of a touring circuit mm. in, that, uh, in the, in the yeah. eastern area. Yeah. So, Jeff, uh, just uh, I'll ask you a political question now. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, live theater is certainly not, I would not say it's thriving across Canada in, in any centers across the country. Uh, what, what is the state of, of live theater in, in Newfoundland and Labrador, in your view? It, it, it seems to be holding its own. You know, it's, it's a tough haul. It's a tough haul. But I think what happens is that the passion is there for it, the devotion to it is there, and by hook or by crook, we're going to make it work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now it would be nice if we got some more assistance with it, but uh, it, it, uh, it it seems to be doing okay. You know, we have our up times and our down times, and, and we adjust accordingly mm -hmm. to it. You know, we either cut back on shows or make the cast smaller or things yep. like that, but we find a way around it. And, uh, and I think there tends to be more of a move now towards more corporate sponsorship mm -hmm. and things like that. And well, on that positive note, I'm going to thank you for being on One Chef, One Critic. It was great Cheers. having you here and hearing your stories. And good luck Perfect with Jeff. New Curtain Theatre and all its ventures. We'll be back with Bernie Ann Ezekiel of Academy Canada, who's going to whip up a dessert. You've seen the show, and now there's a book. Cooking with One Chef, One Critic by Carl Wells with Steve Watson features 120 recipes, more than 200 photos, and plenty of behind-the-scenes stories from this long-running series. Cooking with One Chef, One Critic is available now. Well, Academy of Canada continues to offer one of the finest culinary programs in the city of St. John's. And uh, Quick Entry is available several times of the uh, year, through the year. Uh, just getting a little plug in there for them. <laughs> and if you're one of those people lucky enough to sign on to Academy Canada's program, you will no doubt meet uh, our next guest, and she is Bernie Ann Ezekiel, who is the chef instructor at Academy Canada's Culinary Program. Nice to have you back with us. Thank you for inviting me back. Oh, well, you're more than welcome. Perfect, Bernie. Now, what have we got here? I, I, obviously, I think it's going to be some bake, though, isn't it? Yes, uh, we're actually going to make a spiced pumpkin cake mm. with some roasted apples and some homemade caramel sauce. Perfect. I was wondering if that was pumpkin or a sweet potato. <laughs> it's pumpkin, yep. Yeah, okay, great. So let's get started. Okay, so. We've got some butter here. Um, you can use salted or unsalted, whichever you prefer. Mm -hmm. Some Demira sugar. I love Demira sugar because it has a higher molasses content. Okay. And we're going to cream that together, just like you would any standard cake recipe. Yep. So once this gets fully incorporated, we're going to add in our eggs, mm -hmm. blend them just a little bit, and then put our sour cream and our pumpkin in there. Oh, you put sour cream in as well, do you? Okay. Yes. Sour cream kind of gives it a nice little tangy flavor and it also helps keep it moist. Okay. Okay, so. Just about there. Just about there. We'll start adding in our eggs. Very slowly, is it? Oh, I just one at a time. time. Yeah. Once it's pretty well mixed in, you can add some more. Okay. This is not a very finicky recipe, so we don't have to be too careful. careful. No. So it doesn't matter if they're medium eggs or large eggs or. I tend to use large or extra large. Okay. And that's typically what I have at home, so that's what I built the recipe on. Oh, great. Okay. okay. Okay, so that's coming along well. I'm going to stop that just so I can get my sour cream, sour cream. in there. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to be messed up, see, so. No, we don't want to get splatters on you. <laughs> so this is, especially with the pumpkin, it's going to be a really rich, moist cake. It is. It's very moist. It's very spicy. Great for any any fall meal that you're planning. Mm. Now this is pure pumpkin. Uh, you can go ahead and roast pumpkin yourself and puree it if you want to, or you can just 
by the canned pumpkin. Mm -hmm. If you buy canned, be sure to not get the pumpkin pie filling. Oh, okay. That has other things yeah. added in there to help it set when you bake it, and we don't want that because we're putting our own in there. Oh yeah, with the eggs. So the are you right. putting any uh, nutmeg or allspice or anything like that in? I'm actually going to use uh, pumpkin pie spice. You can actually buy that ready made. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and it's got allspice, nutmeg, ginger, cinnamon, and cloves in there. And I've sifted that in with my flour, as well as some baking soda and salt. Right. Okay. So, I thought that flour looked like it had been colored up a little bit with something. It is, and there's a fair bit in there. There's a couple of tablespoons. Right. And it looks like it nice and spicy. Now we're just going to blend this carefully. You don't want to get any splashes on Steve. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go <No>. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I dare you. <laughs> with that shirt he's wearing, you probably wouldn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> this is my rainforest shirt. This is rainforest. Yeah. Yes. Okay, a couple it's little poofs of flowers. Just be careful of those. That's okay. I've got this on low speed, although you wouldn't say the way it's poofing up there. Yeah. <laughs> so, we can actually stir the rest of this in by hand if you want to. And this is going to be a very thick batter. I'm going to take this paddle off here. And we can actually stir the rest of this in here. I don't want to get Steve dirty. <laughs> All feel free. Okay. okay, I'll take that. Thank you very much. No licking. No licking. No licking. <laughs> okay, the rest of our dry ingredients in. And as I said, there's salt in there, and there's also baking soda and pumpkin pie spice, and there's a fair bit of spice in there. Right. And that complements the pumpkin beautifully. And once this is done, we're going to pour this, distribute it evenly, amongst uh, 10 three-inch ramekins. That's how much the recipe will yield. Oh, you're not gonna put it in like a big uh, cake pan? No, I'm not gonna do that, but if you wanted okay. to do that, I would recommend putting it in a bunt pan so, or okay, a two So these are oven proof, little individual. Mm -hmm. They are, yeah. They're, they're already uh, buttered, aren't they? I've yeah. got them sprayed okay. with nonstick spray. Great. Yeah, and just and distribute so, that evenly. Uh, just to move along sure. more quickly here mm -hmm. now, we can we can do that afterwards. Yeah, sure. Let's uh, let's show the finished product, and you're going to decorate it up a little okay, bit for us. Okay, this is the finished cake. We're serving at room temperature. We've yep. got some roasted apples on here. Nice. And they've just been basted in some yep. uh, simple syrup. Okay. We've got homemade caramel sauce as well. It's beautiful. Put a little on there. I think you want to try it, don't you? Carol? Yep. <laughs> beautiful. And we've also got some homemade chantilly cream that we can just put a little on the side. It's great. And you can put a little bit in there. As you take a bite. And Chantilly cream mm -hmm. has vanilla and sugar in it and... It does. Um, this here is a cup of whipping cream, a scraped vanilla bean, and about a tablespoon or two of sugar. Okay, well, mm -hmm. look, that's so beautiful, <laughs> isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, thanks Thank so you. much for doing that for us. No problem. And that's it for this edition of... One Chef, One Critic. Oh! <laughs> you couldn't wait to get into the Chantilly cream. Chantilly mm -hmm. cream I love Chantilly cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's right. good. You taste the vanilla bean through and you taste the uh, pumpkin yeah, and the spice through it. The caramel sauce is excellent. Yeah. Thank you. I was really disappointed that you didn't get any flour on the shirt. I was thought that would be the highlight of the segment. <laughs> if you were still here, you would have you put see, it on number 10, wouldn't you? And there's a reason why. <laughs> there's a reason why we have all of the equipment to, over there. <laughs> so I get messy. Place. It's so that none of it slops up on me. It's all strategic to All. <laughs> Wine, yes, but a pinot. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve, there's a funny line that goes, uh, I love cooking with wine, and sometimes I even put it in my food. Uh, but that's not such a, a crazy thing to do, is it? No, it's uh, not. <laughs>